Hi, Dr. Wade. How are you? Very good. Very good. Very good. This is something I'm really interested in. And with the holidays approaching, are there certain foods that people with MS should avoid? There's no specific diet with respect to MS. There used to be some theories about certain diets were better or not. I think that we've found so far with research that a normal, healthy, low-fat diet emphasizing fruit and vegetables, the diet most people should take as in a normal, healthy adult is the right way to go. On the holidays, you can have a good meal every once in a while. It's not that strict. But in general, you should stick to a normal, healthy diet and take vitamins. Normal, healthy diet. Yep, and that's take all you vitamins. need. Yep. And, and the di diet should be low in fat? Yes, just a general healthy diet. Okay, okay, excellent. Well, does having MS mean that you can't be physically active? Does everyone diagnosed with the, uh, MS end up in a wheelchair? And I w wanted to know in particular because I have a young friend who has it, and she's tried to stay very active. She lives in California. I think your friend's doing the right thing. We used to think that rest was important, and anybody that was having any symptoms, they should just rest in bed for several days. It turns out that nowadays we emphasize exercise. It's very important to stay healthy because exercise is good for you. In patients with MS, it also helps fatigue. It helps spasticity. It can help pain. And so we emphasize exercise. At the center where I work, we actually have three full-time physical therapists that work with our patients to maximize their exercise. Well, could you explain spasticity? Okay, spasticity is stiffness. There's tightness in the muscles, and so it's kind of like in the wintertime when your legs get really cold and stiff. That's what spasticity is. Okay. Well, what should someone with MS know before starting a family? What they should know most importantly is that they can start a family. There's no restrictions based on the diagnosis that you shouldn't have children. We want the people that have the MS, to, especially the women, to realize that during pregnancy, especially towards the end of pregnancy, the chance of an attack goes down. At the, but after the baby's mm -hmm. born, there's a bit of an increase of a risk of an attack. But overall, it's an average number that doesn't change. And we want them to have children if they'd like to. The risks of the baby being born, developing MS as they grow older, is about 1 in 25. So we do not counsel mm -hmm. families to have, not have children. Oh, that's interesting because, like I said, my young friend, she's in her 20s, and um, she hasn't had children yet, and she'd love to hear that. Um, is it true that there are only a few treatment options for MS? It used to be there were no treatment options 20 years ago, and then we started to come up with medications. And I'd like to thank Biogen IDAC for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today about myths for medicine and medications for MS. The medicines now are given by injection or given by oral agents, pills or infusions. One of the medications we have now is called Plegrity, which is a medicine that's given by injection once every two weeks. And it's been shown to decrease the chance of having another attack to delay disability, and to calm down the MRI scan, the scan that shows inflammation. As with all other medications, you need to be aware of the side effects and risks. With Plegrity, there can be liver function trouble. Depression can be an issue. You can have a reaction where you give yourself the injection. Mm -hmm. And so we need to discuss the risks of the medications and the effectiveness of the medication with your doctor to make the right decision mm -hmm. for, the, for the right patient. Mm, okay. Well, is the disease more prevalent in certain ethnicities or races? And that's important to us. It turns out there's about two and a half million people worldwide that have multiple sclerosis. So it's a worldwide disease. About 400,000 people in the United States. We used to think it was more common in Caucasian women, but it turns out over, with more and more research, it affects all races and ethnicities, and so it's not something that protects, that, that doesn't affect. African-American patients are also at risk for multiple sclerosis. Mm. Well, where can my viewers learn more about it? multiple sclerosis and what we've talked about here today? One of the best places to look is on the National MS Society website. 
I'm on the board of directors of the Connecticut chapter of the National MSS Society, and there's a great deal of information there. You can contact them on the phone, and they can also send you literature about symptoms in, like, such as spasticity if you wanted to get information that way. Also, on the medications you're on, you can look at the websites for the medication, such as Plegrity.com. Wow, Dr. Wade, thank you so much. This has been very informative, and I think my viewers will really like that, and I think it will help my friends. Okay, thank you. Okay, have a great day. You take thank care you. now.